Hello again, it's Paul, and today, as usual, we are playing uh, Shenzhen IO. We're on to the next puzzle now. This one is called Virtual Reality Puzzle. A par a <clears throat> Excuse me. Apologies again. Like I'm not showing you the. There is a. There are emails you get. And it's 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 a nice sort of story happening in the background. I mean, there's nothing obviously. Um, too much going on, but I'm not going to show that. I'm not going to read out the emails. I've said this a number of times before. I just I just feel that we, we, we'll play it for the puzzles and, you know, I'm sure everybody will enjoy exploring the rest of the game themselves. So, right, I'm on now Virtual Reality Buzzer, new design. Let's have a look at what we need to do here. Virtual Reality Buzzer. Radio RX is a non-blocking X bus input connected to the radio receiver. So what it said, it said in the sort of email that it always, it'll send minus 999 all the time if you ask it, if there's nothing there. So it's non-blocking, you don't have to, it doesn't have to have a sort of transmit packet there. Um, buzzer is a simple output connected to an electromechanical buzzer and when a data packet is received over the radio read it and execute the corresponding command power on turn off the power zero means turn off the buzzer one means turn on the buzzer right so and it isn't just turn it on i mean it's getting a pulse generated to it it's not just like making it go high it's, you know, whilst we're between a one and a zero, we've got to keep this sort of buzzer pulsed. Right, I'm going to use a big one. Let's see what happens. We're using RX. We bring RX into X1 and we'll take P1 out. So again, what we can see down here is one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. So I'm presuming we'll, that there is extra, I suppose there's extra data, um, there's redundancy in the input flow, in that we don't really care. If we get something, whether it's a zero or one, we're going to change whatever we're doing. We're presuming that this data stream here never has a one followed by another one, or a zero followed by another zero. It is always one, zero, one, zero. So therefore, you know, if you know where you are, if you get something, you know it's not what it was. If you know, if you if you get, I mean, I'm not sure if it'll be important, but it, it it might be. It looks like we can do it. Although you know there may be there may be test runs later where they do send ones followed by ones or zeros followed by zeros. In which case, you know, it mightn't work depending on how I do it. Anyway, right. So the first thing we need to do is we need to wait for a packet. So we could test equal. x1 and we look for a 1. Now because we're pulsing we're going to be doing this this sort of trick where we use the accumulator and not it. So, so just when I get a 1 and I know I'm turning it on I'm just going to move 0 to the accumulator just just I mean just so that we absolutely have to know that it's going to start. So, and if we didn't test equal, so a minus sign there, I'm going to sleep one and jump back to the start. And I'm going to put a label up here for S, S meaning start in my head. Right. So now we're onto the pulsing bit. So we're gonna just knot the accumulator. Done this before. Move accumulator to P1. We're gonna sleep for one. Right, now we need to check and make sure that we're not getting another. So we're probably gonna be looping back up here. No, L, L for loop. So we sleep for one. Now let's test if equal x1 and 0. So have we got a 0 in saying to stop? If we haven't, jump to L. And if we have, 
it'll come down here. We'll see what happens. I'm not sure with, because we'll be missing, in theory we might be missing a sleep. Let's have a look. Okay, so what seems to be happening here, this one worked okay, but if it's on a high bit, if we leave it on a high in this loop, it remains high. So what I need to do is if I got a one, that fix it. Yeah, that's looking pretty, pretty good. Okay, so that's virtual reality buzzer. Um, again, I'm not going to get too, too hung up on all this. I wonder though, We're at 10 lines of code, and we're only using an X and a P. And this thing here takes nine lines of code. So if I could get rid of one line of code in this, then if I get rid of one line of code in this, it would Yeah, if I get rid of one line of code, then I could fit it on the MC4000. That's what I meant to be saying there. So what can I do to get rid of one line of code? Well, without reorganizing it, I have a sleep here and a sleep here. So I wonder, could I let this fall through? I wonder, could I let this fall through to, to reuse that sleep? And it'd probably be slightly less efficient, but can it be done? As far as I know, we can't put a so when we're coming down through here, test of equals x one is one. Come through here, we do this, we do the sleep, we do the we would do the jump and go back to there. So we have a met, we have like false set as we come down here, or else we have true set when we want to come down. If it's true, we do that and we skip these two lines and we start doing this. So what would happen if I put a true on that? doesn't like it. Why does it not move test of equal? Because I'm coming back here with a negative. Right, so I'd like to be coming back here with a positive, wouldn't I? So if I was to change that to a plus to jump well. Change that to a TNE. Is it a it's 
test equal x11 and do that. Right. Right, so this is just getting fiercely and complicated and my head is about to explode. But what I'm thinking now is we've got plus on this jump, so that's working there. So if the sleep always happens, and this line minus JMP S was here. Can I just throw away these two lines? And the answer is yes. So again, like this is abusing slash using slash clever, no, not abusing, cleverly using these, um, not the power usage on a little bit, cleverly using these uh, pluses and minuses but it you know you you'd need you'd now need six times as long to actually understand what this code is doing so I'm control seeing that the whole point of doing this was to get one of these guys put it into that I'm just gonna move him just off the board a second pin type mismatch right so these are now X zeros. That's still P1. I have copied my code so I can get rid of that. And now we finally got this nine lines of code running on a MC4000 431 or whatever. I'm not sure what the Chinese currency is. It's, it's confusing. Yeah, some we've now got our product cost down. So, you know, again, it just, but ah, look at this. This is, you know, almost unreadable because, you know, instead of having it nice up here, you could see what we were doing. We were waiting until we got the right thing, sleeping, and then jumping back to start. We've abused the fact that it's a negative coming out of this test and a plot, when I say negative, I mean a false coming out of this test, which falls us through and a true out of this test which brings us back up and therefore in the middle we can sort of have some lines which are only being used which are common to both routines but yeah so we're basically reusing that sleep is all is, is what we managed to do now there's probably much much cleverer ways i mean there's bound to be really clever ways of doing these with just sort of gates and all the rest of it um but let's not go there as yet. Right, so that was, I believe, um, Virtual Reality Buller. Thank you for watching. Um, if you enjoyed it, please do drop a like on the video and consider subscribing to the channel. And I will be doing more of these episodes, hopefully getting this game completely done. I have no idea how many puzzles are in it. Uh, I mean, some of them, I mean, there was like, could have been 50-ish in Infinifactory, wasn't there? Anyway, thank you again for watching. Bye now.